Hello, in this video I'm going to give a little background to Ernest Rutherford, the physicist who's often described as the father of nuclear physics. So uh, we get on to that and his discoveries in a moment. But first of all, so Rutherford, he was born in New Zealand in 1871. He had a Scottish father and an English mother, uh, fourth of uh, 12 children. But he, yeah, so he had strong links back to Britain. Um, and after he completed his undergraduate uh, degree at uh, Canterbury College in Christchurch, New Zealand, he then moved to England to the Cavendish Laboratory at the University of Cambridge and then to Trinity College, College Cambridge, where he studied under J.J. Thompson, you know, the guy who discovered the electron and who came up with the what's now referred to as the plum pudding model of the atom. You know, something which has subsequently been shown to be false by none other than Rutherford himself. Um, so uh, Rutherford, he, he was assisting Thompson during the discovery of the electron. And he then moved into radioactivity I and mean, he provided better descriptions of alpha radiation and beta, beta radiation. Uh, and it was Rutherford who came up with those names for them, the alpha and the beta. Um, he discovered the idea of radioactive half-life and the element radon as well, one of the radioactive elements. So he did a lot of work in radioactivity. And in 1911, he then created the Rutherford model of the atom. So this was based on the gold foil experiment that was performed by Hans Geiger and Ernest Marsden. And Rutherford was looking at the results of this. And you know the, the fact that we had most of these uh, these alpha particles were shooting straight through the gold, but some of them were getting deflected at big angles or right back at the observer. And it was from that that he then threw out Thompson's plum pudding model and brought in the you know small nucleus of positive charge with mostly empty space everywhere else. Um, and that model of the um, the atom, although obviously it's been developed considerably since, is still uh, still sort of the, the baseline that we start from um, in what atoms atoms are actually like. Um, and then later he was bombarding nitrogen atoms with alpha particles, you know, continuing along the same sort of vein. Um, and continuing his work in radioactivity. And as part of that, he discovered the proton, uh, which he described as a sort of positive electron. Uh, so, yeah, protons were discovered much later than the electron. Um, and, yeah, Rutherford was the man who did it. Um, he actually won his Nobel Prize, which he won in uh, 1908. So this is before he came up with his model of the atom. And he won his Nobel Prize in chemistry. Uh, so that says a lot about his proficiency as an experimental scientist. You know, he was working in these two disciplines. And I know there's a lot of crossover, particularly back then, between the two of them. Uh, but, yeah, he was very proficient at uh, experiments. And he died relatively young, you know, only in 1937. So, I mean, Thompson outlived him. Um, and he died due to complications around a strangulated hernia. But he's also buried in Westminster Abbey, not far from um, Thompson, who he worked with and was his teacher. Um, of course, uh, another part of his legacy is that uh, Rutherfordium, um, which I nearly said wrong, but yeah, Rutherfordium, one of the chemical elements, one of the really you know high numbered ones, um, that was named in honour of him when they were dishing out some new names in the 1990s. Um, so, yeah, he'll always be remembered for that, along with his many, many other discoveries. So, yeah, he was quite the guy.